keep you from zone blocking, keep you from coming off and zoning. Why? Because when you zone, you can actually get two on the down lineman initially and then get to the linebacker. You're, you're actually working two on the down lineman and then get the backer. Okay, when you power zone, the old rule was just to blow the down lineman off the ball, wait till the linebacker shows in the window. So, and like I said, we, we, we're getting away from more power zone because these linemen are getting leveraged, attacking the line of scrimmage. We're getting too many stalemates up there, no movement. And so what we're moving more to is an outside zone principle with inside zone uh, uh, techniques as far as uh, the, the, the backfield. All right. Now, common mistake here is going east and west too long. It's knowing when, hey, you know, knowing when to come off of it. And basically what I tell them is, I've heard guys say, read the knee. So when a guy's lined up, let's say I'm a defensive five technique, read the knee. If the knee goes, if the knee goes away, you go away. Hey, let me tell you something. They're looking at the knee to me, they're looking too much at the ground. I want them looking through the defender's numbers, wherever they are. Now, the only problem with that is, is you have to be on the same level. Okay? So if you get a table, you got a table here like this, you know, what I, I really want. I so want these guys to, you know, bent. I want them to be bent over. Okay. You understand? I want them. I'm more like a flat table back. All right. So their back. Just imagine this is their back. I want them to look at the guy's numbers, looking through their eyebrows here, and not looking through the guy's numbers from up. I want them to see the numbers actually from a level position. So in other words, when I step right here, I want to see the numbers from a level position here. I don't want to see the numbers from here because I can't get in a good leverage press position when I'm up here and, he, and the defender's down here, okay? I can get myself in a good leverage position as I rip through here and stay down in this position, all right? So what I want to do is keep a flat back for as long as possible. All right, now, one of the other things that I like to say too that I think helps is this. Don't get so busy in trying to hook a guy. Sometimes when we stretch, stretch hook, and a guy's got a guy hooked, he's so busy trying to do all this, you know, turn his ass and hook the guy. That's not the idea. The idea is to hook him with your shoulders basically square to the line of scrimmage. Hook him that way and then do this. Use the defender's movement to create movement. Use the defender's movement to create movement. So when I hook them and got them hooked, hey, I don't, I'm not going to try to turn them and all that stuff. I'm not going to keep running them. Because I got one thing to do as an offensive lineman. Block them. One thing. Block them. Defenders got two things to do. Defeat my block and make a tackle. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'll be son of a bitch if he can defeat my block and make a tackle. All I got to do is block a guy. All I got to do is block the guy. He's got two things to do. So quit trying to take your 400 pound bench and turn it into a, a, you know, hey, I'm a muscle guy. Because all you do is help him get to the play. That's all you do. Just run him and block him and stay on him. Run him, block him, and stay on him. Hey, I'm not interested in to see if you can, you know, reverse uh, whatever that wrestling move is out of it. You know, I, I, I'm not interested in seeing all that stuff. I'm not interested to see whether you can, you know, flip the guy on the ground. What I'm interested to see you do is rip, run, press, and stay on that block and keep it moving. And when he decides, uh-oh, I got to get off this because here comes the ball carrier, then that's when you accelerate your feet to really get him going back. Because what he did is he went strength, 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 up, I gotta let go because here comes the ball carrier, and then you press. Now that's when you learn how to press. And when you learn how to press, that's when you can get some devastating blocks. You look like a great blocker, but you don't have to be a great blocker. You look like a great blocker, but you don't have to be a great blocker because, again, you understand the concept. Use the defender's movement. Use the defender's movement, okay? All right, okay, let's, uh, when I say ex exceptions to stretch hook, 
there are exceptions. You're always trying to hook a guy. There, I mean, you know, sometimes we do have some exceptions in certain things, certain situations, but there are, aren't any really exceptions to it. splits. Now, let me just tell you something about splits. Uh. <clears throat> it's better on this play to be a little tight than too, than too far away. Why? Because you're, you're, the guy who's scooping is always in an overtake position. Guy who's scooping is always in an overtake position. So it's better to be a little tighter than too far away. Now, I say two feet. Part of the reason I say two feet is this, is because we oftentimes, especially on our level, end up running a lot of man schemes. And why do we run man schemes? Because we're getting leveraged by the three technique. The three technique is getting too far out for the guard to hook them or the five technique's getting too far out to be hooked. So we end up having to go to man schemes. So when you run man schemes, you can keep a good two foot split. When you run the zone schemes, you need to kind of start narrowing it down just a little bit. That's my, that's what I found. Narrow it down, it's better than, hey, here. You can get one foot splits because you know what happens? When you come off the ball, it's all gonna expand anyway. You're gonna compress the line of scrimmage, attack the outside leverage, and the line of scrimmage is going to expand anyway. It's going to expand, OK? And what, what the back do, well, he'll cut towards uneven gaps, all right? All right, now I say may cut it to one foot versus hard charges. Well, isn't that what we're seeing now? We're seeing a lot of guys playing penetration type defenses. So we, we, we ended up cutting it down to about a foot, foot and a half, all right? All right. Create less gaps to rush through. That's where the uh, get quick engagement. These are things that happen when you cut it down. Line of scrimmage stretches automatically on the snap. All right. You must definitely not oversplit the outside zone unless you're running man principles. Do not oversplit the outside zone. All right. The emphasis, the emphasis of the whole thing. Just get leverage. Keep talking about getting leverage. It's just amazing how many guys really don't understand getting leverage. Okay? I, I'm, I'm absolutely floored when I, I say, well, you know, you're supposed to get leverage here. I mean, they don't understand that there's three, there's two types of leverage, basically. Okay? One, one leverage is, is vertical leverage that you use to get underneath a guy's pad. I'm gonna drop, keep a flat back here, and use vertical, I'm gonna put my eyes underneath your chin or in your numbers, and, and I'm gonna have vertical leverage. I'm gonna be able to do this to you, work you up, okay? All right, the other is horizontal leverage. I'm gonna attack your outside armpit or attack your play side armpit and keep you from, and keep you from getting the ball. I'm gonna put my body between you and the ball, okay? Now, this ruins, if you have a team that plays a lot of seven technique or a C-gap player, hard C-gap player, let me just tell you something, my experience has been you better man it. Even if you've got zone, you either better man it or you better change the path of the back. When I tell you our backs were, one yard outside the tight end, one yard deep. So when he takes that ball, if he's got any C-gap movement or penetration, it could make him do a east-west cut, which is not what we want. We do not want an east-west cut, all right? So what we do versus a seven technique, oftentimes is our players will go to a man scheme, automatically. Just the tackle and the guard, uh, tackle and the tight end. They, they will call. 10, which means 
tackle's going to block. Uh, he's got the linebacker every, any way he comes, and the tight end has the seven technique any which way he moves, all right? So he takes a short step, tries to pin the seven technique, and then tackle. Let me just tell you something about full techniques, because you'll use this on the outside zone with your guard and your tackle when you go to man scheme. Simple is this. Whenever you pull, best drill you can work with your lineman is this. Always open step, okay? Cross over on your second step. You see my shoulders? How do they remain? Square in line of scrimmage. I want every time uh, my guys pull and they're attacking a near linebacker, their shoulders have to be square. And, they're, and what I tell them this too is, hey, that's your target. You know, have you ever seen a top gun? You got a, you know, a, a, you got a lock? What's a lock mean? Hey, that guy's been, hey, the, 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 he's been zeroed in on, and the target's been locked. It means he can't get away. You want to know something? Hey, that's what we want for our offensive line. We want them to pull, sight the target, and lock it. Lock it means I'm not dropping my eyes in here and looking around. I'm locking the target. I'm going to feel this stuff here. Feel where I turn up. Feel where I press through. I'm going to lock him. Why? Because you have to have the ability to do this. As I pull right here, and he's running to get that outside number to get leverage. As I pull right here like this, and I start running like this, all of a sudden he tries to come underneath, you got to be able to throttle, get him with your inside hand. And you can't do that when you turn your shoulders. You turn your shoulders like this, he can press the line of scrimmage, and all you can do is kick him out. You turn your shoulders like this, he comes underneath you, and you can't do a damn thing about it. You don't ever turn your shoulders. It's as simple as that, okay? Simple as that. All right. Question, Coach. Yeah, question. Right. Yeah, open step, lateral crossover. Correct. Open step. It's an open step with depth. Get the toe pointed where you're going. I'm going to go out here initially, but I don't want to turn my what? Shoulder. So really what I'm doing is clearing. It's just like when I do a pulling guard. I'm going to tell you something. Your outside foot is back, correct? This is the easiest thing in the world. My hips automatically become what? Open. So if my hips are open, I got a natural crossover, okay? Now, hard, running the power play to the left, backside guard, pull foot is what? Up. Here's how I teach it, watch. Here's my pull, hey, I'm the, I'm the, run, I'm the left guard and I'm gonna pull that way, all right? The left guard down here, pull. now here's how I teach it, because I want my guards on the power play to keep their shoulders square too. So here's what they do. I, all they do is hit a, they open the center right here, they drop like this, and that's how they end up a little bit, right there. So you see what I did? Is I get kick back, I don't know what, it's like a little jump back, but what happened? That foot's now what? Back. Because if I let him do it this way, if I let him do it this way here, here's what they do. And then they have to redirect themselves in the hole. And I don't want them to do it. And I've had, when I was in Kansas, I had about eight teams come to me and want me to teach them just that. Eight other college teams come, and I said, what do you guys want? We want to, we want to know how you do your power play. And I said, well, you can just do it like every, no, but you're, how do you get your guards to pull like that? They want to know how I got the guards and, and, and why I was doing it that way. Because most everybody was open step, run, and then dip the shoulder and turn the hole. And I said, I never wanted to turn the shoulders, ever. And we consequently had great blocks on their front side linebacker because my guys would come back, boom, and they were always running downhill into the line of scrimmage with their shoulders square. And they were able to get a lot of force and get movement on linebackers. Yeah. Backside tackle do that in counter tray too? <coughs> or do you run that play? Yeah. But I'm going to tell you why I used to teach backside tackle, not because he had to get going. Backside tackle looks like this. I mean, it, it, you can, if you study film, you can tell when our guys are going to do it. Just watch. He's like this. All right? Now, that's just normal stance right there. All right? Now he's going to pull. You see what he did? He squared his feet up so that he could. I wanted this foot to come out with depth 
and no, no, he, he's going to turn his shoulders, but I wanted this foot to come out with depth because what he was going to do is he was going to run for a spot three yards deep. He was going to circle in there almost. It was different for the guard because the guard played a long line of scrimmage. The, the tackle actually ran a little bit of a depth like this and then in, okay? So he actually kind of ran a bow. <coughs> but I did help him out by telling him, hey, because some guys had a hard time getting out with their inside foot up and it, and it looked real awkward. So I say, hey, look, just try to squeeze your up foot up a little bit because then it makes it real natural to get out. The other thing I tell them sometimes is just put a little weight on. Think weight on the opposite toe. Just think weight on the opposite toe. That helps out. Okay. All right. But anyway, getting back to you're going to have to use a man scheme if you're getting a lot of C-gap player, I think, if, especially if you're running one yard outside, one yard deep. One yard outside, one yard deep, you're going to have to use a lot of man scheme. You can stay with the zone principles if you go three yards outside because now the back is running really an outside course and it's okay if that guy gets a little penetration, okay? All right. You must have no penetration in the C-gap areas. This is the track of the back. Allow the back to press the line of scrimmage and to make a proper cut, okay? All right. Uh, let me see here. Do me a favor here. Uh, run Everybody run to play a little bit there. Actually. Actually, I got something here. So too. keeping those shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, you're talking about only when you want a bat, uh, guard to go up and get to the second level. Right. It's not, not like a trap. No, 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 no. Trap. Second level. Trap. Trap is trap. I always tell them, I always make fun of my players. I go, you know what? If, if, if your shoulders are turned towards the line of scrimmage, I mean, turned towards the sideline, you must be doing one of two things. You must be coming off the field after a touchdown. You must be come or uh, you must be trapped somewhere. If you ain't doing one of those two things, I'm going to be upset. You know what I'm saying? And actually, I mean, if, I guess if the series was over, they could be doing it too. But the point is, is we don't want to, I want everything pressing up the field as much as possible. Okay? And uh, you know, what? one of the things I've often found, and I think you guys will find it too, is how much guys don't really understand advance. You know when you go to block a guy, and you come off with a linebacker, and all of a sudden that linebacker just runs and beats you. And so what you do, or he runs over here, and, and, and here's the ball carrier coming in. So what you do is you turn, and you go and try to chase him back into the hole here. And what you end up doing is you becoming an extra defender for the running back to deal with, because there's no place to run. And Vance, whether you're a guard, backside tackle, whatever, I go. The guy's got your feet with leverage, advance on the next guy. Because you know if your running back beats him, the next guy's gonna make the play. And your running back, we always tell him, hey, if you're any good, you gotta make one guy miss. You know? <laughs> you gotta make one miss. Okay, if you're any good at all, you gotta make one miss. Alright, so the whole purpose is when you're lineman, is always keep what doing what? Pressing up the field, pressing up the field. Advance, 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 and press, okay? You know, one of the team, who, who always leads the team in rushing every year in the United States on the college level? Huh? Nebraska's won, Air Force. Now tell me, what, what do one of, those, one of those teams have in common? They what? Option. Option of football. You want to know what? Nebraska, if you'll get their film out, they run wishbone principles when they run the option. And you know what that is? I run, go get the linebacker, the linebacker piece, me, I go to another, I go get the next guy. Their linemen just run, they run tracks, they don't get them, they go to the next one. You know why? Because how many times have you ever seen a guy like this turn, and now the one has no place to go, can't cut inside, can't cut outside, because you got two guys, because your linemen turn back towards the play. Hey, you know, linemen should never, ever, ever turn back towards play. And I get it. It's amazing how many times you get that happen, you know? It's like this. All right? It's like this. 
How many got? You got anybody got a dog? Okay. Take take a take a piece of meat in your hand. I guess and hold it in front of the dog. And take your other hand right here and close it right here. And then take the hand that's closed that has no meat in it and go like this. And watch what your dog does. What's he do? Nothing. Huh? Nothing. Wrong. You don't have a dog. <laughs> you don't have a dog. The dog will always go with the hand that's moved. Always. He'll come back to the meat, but he will always. You like this? He was right with that hand. And I tell my players, don't be like the dog. Chase things we don't need to chase. You understand me? We don't need it. We need to chase things we need to get, not chase things we don't need to chase. Once you're beat, you're beat. Go get somebody else. Once you're beat, you're beat. Hey, once that guy's leveraged you, you can't get him. Hey, don't run in and get in the way. Go get the next guy. It's a, it's a wishbone principle. I taught wishbone when I was in Northern Illinois. That was the whole premise of wishbone. Lock a track, get the linebacker, can't get the linebacker. Hey, here, here's, here's a tackle. Release, flat, go get the free safety. So that he, he go like this, get the linebacker. Go through, inside, dip, try to get the linebacker, can't get the linebacker. He flat, just like this. Almost running sideways, trying to get the free safety. Picked off. So he's back to the next level, right? <coughs> Okay. All right, tight end. We talked about this a little bit. All right, you must help contain the C gap penetration. And, 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 and look, if you're going to zone block it, then the tight end has to take a strong step with his inside foot and actually double that area. Strong step with his inside foot and actually double through. And, and make sure you're getting a double team block on that seven technique. Otherwise, you make a tag call. All right. <coughs> now, this is something we tried to do, and I've done it a few times against bear defense. It's not that good. It's called the push technique, and really, basically, there's two outside. In other words, the end line's up in a seven technique, and the and the and the uh, Sam Backer lines up on the line of scrimmage outside him, or Bear defense, and Sam comes up and chokes down on the tight end, and the end goes up and lines up outside, okay? When we had that technique, oftentimes we tried to keep the outside zone on, and we call it a push technique. They drop step and attack the outside number, tried to get the hook on the outside number, and the back ran the C gap to an inside cut. If they, if they, if they got him hooked, he went outside. It worked about... Uh, maybe five or six times we ran that actually in a game. It probably worked twice. The other three times we got stoned for losses. Okay? So I don't really think it's, whenever you get two outside, I think either, or, you know, when the tight end's covered with another one outside, when you run the outside zone, you got two choices. All right? You either motion a guy to block the guy outside and keep everybody's principles the same inside, or you check it. Check it away. Check it for something else. Yeah. Is that it? TV's not on, Coach. Yeah, I know. Uh, now, uh, what I got here, <coughs> we've been studying a lot, is I got a little bit of, uh, uh, and I, here's what I'm going to do. Before we get started, I'm going to show you a little bit of film and just run outside zone stuff, and you guys can ask me some questions. And I really hate this. I hate the setup. I hate the setup because I, I really like a big picture with a laser because it's hard to watch it on, on a TV like this, uh, but at 
at least maybe you guys get an idea. But here's what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to get uh, three or four guys up here, and I want to just teach, go through the teaching fundamentals. Well, first of all, let's do this. Uh, let me finish running back. I'll cover it, and then I'm going to teach the progression like we do it with the offensive line. All right? Depending upon the speed of the guy, it's depending upon how much depth you can put him at. All right? But six and a half to seven and a half is what we normally use. Uh, open step for outside leg, leg of the tight end, run the track, feel the stretch, cut there. All right? We, outside leg of the tight end, that's really one yard outside leg of the tight end. So when he open steps right there, he's one yard outside that tight end, one yard deep. Okay? All right. Take bounce only when it's natural. Never force a bounce. Too many times guys take the ball and they, they take it here and they want to jump outside right now and, and the defense is stretching outside. We don't, hey, you run that track and press that track and if they got, it looks like they're hanging and got hooked, then you can take the bounce. Otherwise, we want you to run a north and uh, turn this into a north-south play. This is a little bit different than it's a little bit different than when you take it three yards outside. You take it three yards outside the tight end box, you're really running the ball outside. And, and it's really, it's either outside or further outside is what it ends up being. Okay? All right. Okay. Get the defense to stretch and press the LOS. Offensive line uh, has to set the blocks on the second level. Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, let me just go over it, uh, uh, a drill here and then we'll try to teach it, okay? All right, here's how you set up your offensive line to do this drill, okay? <coughs> All you do is get your, uh, just work the right side first, take your uh, center, right guard, right guard, right tackle, right tackle, tight end. Okay, and, and what you do is you stand back here, you get one coach, you get tight end coach to stand over here, or you get one coach to stand right here. I'm gonna tell you something, I'm a big believer in rep. The more you do it, the better you get. You know what, and, and this is a true story. Whenever I say the more you do it, the better you get, I always think of this guy, Evil Knievel. All right, I, I'm at University of Kansas, I come up to play golf in the summertime. I get to the uh, golf course called Albemarle Country Club. I get down there, and I'm looking at this car, most bizarre-looking car you've ever seen. Low to the ground, sleek-looking, all black. I look inside, it's got buttons and all this shit. 